Nico Vink is a, he's a character. Sending it way bigger than anybody, best style ever. So much bike control, you're so rare to see Nico Vink make any sort of mistake. Real nice guy, modest, mellow guy that is doing phenomenal stuff. He has so much flow and the way he rides it, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just really good to watch. Yeah, he was always that, that one kid that was just like way better than everybody else. Nico Vink's an interesting guy looking to uh, go big. Good to have you. Nice, man. Thanks for waiting. Hey, no worries. I've got a question. How the hell did you get a truck named after yourself in a big place like this? Well, I've been an ambassador for a couple of years, like five years or so, yeah, for yeah. the resort. Yeah. And then I got the opportunity of building a line together with my buddy Krista. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's it, kind of. Man, building a big trail like that with your buddy, that's a dream come true, dude. Oh, and it's definitely. named after you. It's definitely that... a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> right, so that's just the top section. That was built last year, right? Yeah, a year ago. A year ago, yeah. Okay, now, this is the mid section. Yeah, we're just at the start of it. Like, there's two more sections coming, a bit easier than the top one. Oh, hell. Way more flowy, is it? Easier for sure. All right, I'll follow you. Cool, good. I ride a lot of bikes daily or two times a day. I think I'm just, I've always been in love with two wheels and very dedicated to riding. And if there wasn't, a, like if there was a day without riding, I would be grumpy. I just needed it. Like it was something, it was a necessity to me, like to go ride. Uh, Nico is a little kid that I met in the skate park and um, he was always, you know, miles ahead for anybody, you know, like, Sending it way bigger than anybody, best style ever. Yeah, he was always that that one kid that was just like way better than everybody else. The first time I picked up two wheels, I must have been at home in Belgium. My dad um, raced motocross and then he had a bike shop. So I, I grew up going to motor races and, and BMX stuff. Like when my mom was pregnant from me, she did a BMX race with me in her belly. So, wow. so I even rode before I actually was born and I got a mountain bike when I was probably four or five or six or something. So it, it looked like a BMX, so yeah. same thing. Yeah. Uh, we actually grew up together because we oh, lived wow. like in the same street. Right, oh, same street? Oh, yeah, <laughs> went to like school together, actually kindergarten. A little bit further in the street where we lived, we had like yeah. a big pile of sand. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So we were just like digging and riding. So it started at real, um, like yeah, real yeah. young age. Yeah. Building trails and. Yeah. Ah. 
This is Christoph Lassens, Nico's oldest friend and an incredible rider in his own right. I caught up with him whilst he was maintaining the downhill tracks at Morjan. Yeah, it all started just riding bikes in Belgium and then we started riding downhill. Yeah. And then once we start with that, you want to go like... Yeah, you want to get bigger. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now we start like racing. I started racing downhill at the age of 15, I would say. It was national champs. And my dad's like, oh, let's go give it a go. Like, let's try it out. So we went there, he built me like a bike. Like I got some fresh brakes, like hardtail hydraulic Megura brakes and all that stuff. And I entered the race and I won my class. I became national champion in age 15 or something. With downhill racing, I like the di diversity of it. Like you push, like you're always looking for that extra second, like always trying to go a bit faster. And I especially liked it in the early days because like I wasn't too serious. So I just like went to a race and did laps all day as much as we could, like 15 <laughs> if we could or 20 if we could. And I just loved riding it. It was a bit of a challenge, you know, like you had roots and rocks and jumps and like beautiful locations. You don't got the impression you're on some soccer field, you know, like it's like you're in the mountains. Riding downhill, yeah. we did a few races and then, yeah, you okay. want to go and check out like bigger courses. And yeah, yeah. You so wanted to progress your downhill riding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said racing, did you race World Cups with Nico? Yeah, did you yeah. start? Oh, really? Yeah, wow. yeah, we did like. Wow. Yeah, we did a lot of races together. Real? Actually. Like a f how many seasons? Like two, three? Like oh, a, a lot. Yeah, a lot. That and Nico moved in like the, into teams and stuff, okay. but we were still like I was around. So yeah, I yeah. think it was over like a time. Of, wow, so you've so ten years that yeah. we rode racing. I never really was like I want to become a downhill racer. I, I always had like like posters of like John Tomac and and like all the legends at the time, Greg Herbold and all those dudes, Hans Ray. Yeah. And I watched all the movies, but like, you know, I never really. I just rode bike and I enjoyed it. So I, I guess I got a bit over it because it was it became too much of a, a workout thing and not like a, like I want to progress my riding and not my fitness. And I, like I started I ended up paying my own like gas to go to races and I wasn't getting like the results I needed to be paid and I was still like doing okay like top 30s occasionally and maybe a top 20 if, if, a, good, if a good day. But then I just got over it. I, I rode a lot of skate park BMX. I like I just loved riding, and like you know that BMX vibe kind of, or the free ride vibe is a bit different. So I, I kind of like, why am I not doing that stuff? It suits my personality way better than the racing. Ben Walker as well during the Chatel Mountain style. Nico was finishing World Cups and he was getting into freeride stuff. I was always really impressed with his riding and knew that he had kind of a, a BMX background or sort of a kind of like a playful jumping stylish background as well as speed and, and like the World Cups in Champry I got to see him riding with the best riders and holding his own and so I was kind of excited to see what he would do if he went if he took that sort of like speed and amplitude, but then took it to sort of more free riding. Ben hooked me up with Scott the next year. I think it was just a, just between us, sort of underground, and then he got a dirt cover, and then I took that to my boss and said, check it out. Like, it's rare that we get covers for athletes with no, no salaries. And so it just kind of like grew between us, and then it sort of grew up bigger, but we sort of had to had to prove what Nico could do in the beginning. Like, I feel like a part of riding is creating new stuff and building new stuff. Then when you're racing World Cup, you just race tracks that get offered to you by 
organizers or UCI or and there's margin to go so much bigger than they are doing like that's one of the things I was like like I, I want to ride bigger jumps like I, I like everyone's talking about the big finish jump and I'm kind of like I did it first lap that's not that's not a big jump you can go way bigger and I guess it might sound cocky but I don't I don't want to be cocky it's just like like I just saw potential to go bigger and and then I got into riding more moto and I was like oh moto guys it right they, they jump like 60 70 and then riding moto I, I kind of like just started like yeah. yeah let's go bigger on mountain bikes because we're not even close to what we can do even now I think we still can go bigger and yeah, yeah there's risk that comes with it but it's worth it I feel like that it's actually what we used to do just build stuff and yeah. then ride it yeah and I think like building those big jumps you have more the opportunity to yeah. build what you want to ride that do-it-yourself build and ride attitude and the feeling that mountain bikers could just go bigger was shared by a few riders around the world. This common mentality led to the creation of Fest Series, where riders take control, organize, build and ride their own freeride courses around the globe. Yeah, Fest Series definitely opened a lot of doors. First year I did Royal Hills, I invited Makin and Andreo. Like we did Royal Hills and Makin invited me to Huck Fest, which was actually the original, the first fest. Like we were riding the bigger jumps and we had like the best week of our lives almost, you know? So we were just having fun, progressing, feeling like we were doing what we love. So we kind of, at the end of the week, are like, we need to do more of these. And then over winter, we started like chatting and like, let's do a series. I'll do one. And Aggie's like, I'll do one. And so the first year, like I, Aggie did Aggie's reunion. I did Loose Fest. I think Sorgi did Retallic, Hoff Fest, and then Hawk Fest. And from there on, and I can grew in what it is now, kind of. And it definitely, yeah, it's definitely been a good time in Fest. Like, definitely a lot of fun and a good crew, it's, it's, it's been good. Like after Loose Fest, you end up going to Crankworx and you're like Crabapple, which are big jumps. And then you're just like, yeah. <laughs> like it, like, that's fine, it's cool, we're having fun. <laughs> but you're in the back of your mind, like, and then you, you see the other Fest dudes and like, Nico, man, like, f you. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Nico, what did you do to us? Like. I don't have fun anywhere anymore. <laughs> if you want to ride the biggest and most progressive trails in the world, you're going to have to build them. Just as on the bike, Nico has his own style when he's in the excavator. Whenever I ride anything that Nico built, it's, uh, it just feels like a giant part of a skate park, you know? It's got like shark fins shark to banks, or he hides little kickers left and right into jumps, so you can do all these kind of transfers. Maybe you ride it like 20 times and you still discover little things. But just with all the building that we do, it's already quite a... <laughs> it's, it's just it so always funny. gets out of hand with Nico because he never just want to settle for the basic well, the line or line, yeah, yeah. he always wants to do something extra something, so yeah. it's like he really wants it to be like perfect so it yeah. takes some sometimes it takes a lot of time yeah. or if you're not really satisfied yeah just destroy it and start again 
That's one of the things that I enjoy about Nico the most is that he's willing to do something a little bit farther, put everything he's got into it, and then be the first one to try it or the only one to try it. And so for me, that sort of um, explains Nico is that it's kind of for him inside of, he just wants to take those ideas and put them out there and then see if he can do it. And so I, I think that's really cool that, that he's doing it for good reasons and that he's making kind of big sacrifices to see if his vision or his reasons make sense or work. And then lucky for him and for all of us, I guess, it, it does work out. Sometimes I tell them like, we gotta, we gotta like save some money for you to get you a new van or something. You can't put it all in the digger. And he's like, yeah, but I just want to do this. And he explains this, this feature where you're kind of like, what are you talking, really? Are you serious? So there you go, a cool little insight of who Nico Vink is. He's super inspirational dude to all those mountain biking fans out there, as well as those professionals. They look up to him because of his style. But if you want to see some more of this action, you want to see another documentary, click over here for Dark Fest, some of the world's biggest free ride dirt jumps in the world. And that is out in South Africa, but it is time for a beer. Smash that like button because Nico Vink is super stylish and I actually need a beer, it's been a long week. I'll see you at the next one.